Download links for the files made in this video are in the description. For this video I thought it, it would be useful to have a finished quadruple Solomon's knot on the side so that we can refer to it from time to time. To get started, let's go to File, Document Properties and set the display units to pixels and uncheck show page border to hide the page border. Close document properties and the first step is go to create circles, ellipses and arcs. Click and drag to create a circle. Press Ctrl so that it's a perfect circle. Then let's switch to the Select and Transform Objects tool. And let's lock this padlock, then set the width and height to 90. If the width and height are not both 90, you can unlock the padlock and change the value on the one that isn't 90 to 90 and then lock the padlock again. Then I'm going to come to Object, Fill and Stroke and I'm going to give it an opacity of about 50% and change the fill to black on the bottom palette. Then I'm going to press Ctrl and scroll up to zoom in. Then I'm going to right click on the circle and duplicate it. Then for the duplicate I'm going to give it a width and height of 30 pixels. Now I'm going to click and drag a bounding, bounding box over both circles. Come to Object, Align and Distribute. The Align and Distribute menu might not show because of the fill and stroke, so I'm going to close the fill and stroke and the Align and Distribute menu will show. Then, relative, make sure it's relative to last selected center it on the horizontal axis and vertical like that then let's switch back to create circles and ellipses and arcs then on the circle properties i want to come to the end property and enter a value 180 so 180 what it means is we've we're now turning the circle into a semicircle which starts at zero degrees and goes round and ends at 180 degrees which is here going anti-clockwise. Okay now that we've created a semicircle let's come to path difference and we're going to subtract the smaller circle from the larger circle. Okay, now that we've got the smaller circle subtracted from the larger circle, let's come over to create rectangles and squares. Click and drag while pressing Ctrl to create a square. Switch to select and transform objects and give the square a width and height of 30 pixels. Next we want to make sure that our snap controls are enabled, so enable snapping, enable snap nodes, paths and handles, and snap cusp nodes including rectangle corners. So click and drag the square to the circle and snap it onto the semicircle like that. Then let's press Ctrl D to duplicate the square, click and drag it, snap it on. 
So let's just check our original reference quadruple knot. So these are the two squares that we've created just now. So one, two, then we're going to have a space of one square and we're going to have one, two, three. So that's what we're going to do next. Have a space then three squares. So control D to duplicate, drag it and snap it on. That's going to be our space. Then control D to duplicate this square, drag it up. Then let's remove the square from there, bring it up. Control D to duplicate it, bring it up. And let's press Ctrl D to duplicate the square again one more time. Bring it to the side, then click and drag over all of these. Come to Path, Union. Then I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate this J shape or reverse J, J shape. And then click on it again to reveal the rotation handles. Click and drag the rotation handles. And then press Ctrl to snap it at 180 degrees. Now I'm going to click and drag the square to bring it up to the top here. And then click and drag this upside down J shape and snap it onto the top of the square like that. So if we go to our reference quadruple knot, you'll see that this is what we've just created, just one of the rings. So it's got this bottom part goes over, then there's a space where it goes under, and this arm where it goes over, under, over. So we've just got this one ring. So I'm going to click and drag over both of the arms of the one ring. So that's this one and this one. I'm going to click and drag over both of these. Come to Path, Union. And now they are one object. Next, I'm going to use the square to increase the gaps, these little gaps here, so that the overlaps are more easily visible. So I'll bring the square here. I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate it and bring the duplicate to the side then. Let's come zoom in, go to path, and outset, and that will expand the square slightly. Then shift and click on the ring, then go to path, difference. And that will subtract the expanded little square from the ring. And we're going to do that for all of the spaces. So there's three more spaces left. So control, click on the square, control D three times, control D again, and control D one last time. And let's bring all the squares to the spaces. Then press shift and click on each square and then let's come to path outset then we'll need to subtract them or difference them one by one so click on the ring then shift and click on 
one of the squares and instead of going to the menu we can just press Control and minus to get the difference which is the same as going to as let's say click on this square shift click on the ring and go to path difference and you'll see that the keyboard shortcuts are on the side control minus click on the square shift and click on the ring and control minus now we've got our ring let's align it so let's create a duplicate of the ring control d to create a duplicate then shift and click on the square so i want to snap the square onto the ring first like that onto the side of the ring then shift and click on the ring and come to the line and distribute menu and make sure that the last selected object that you you've clicked is the small square so click on the ring first then shift and click on the small square then come to the line and distribute menu and make sure the line and distribute is relative to last selected and then we want to select and align objects to align right edges of objects to left edges of anchor. So we're aligning the right edge of the ring to the left edge of the small square. So click on that, and the ring will move to the left of the small square. Then we can go ahead and delete the square now, we won't need it anymore. Delete then click on one ring and press shift and click on the second ring then click on them again to show the rotation handles press ctrl d to duplicate them and click and drag and press ctrl to snap them at 90 degrees like that and that is our quadruple Solomon's knot. We can then press Ctrl, Shift and F to get our fill and stroke menu. We'll need to hide the line and distribute menu. So I'm going to click on the X to close it. And then click and drag over all of the rings to select them. And then come to the opacity in the fill and stroke and drag that up to 100. And that is a basic quadruple Solomon's knot. Again, the link to the files are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know also in the comment section. And thank you for watching.